ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance that we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything we newly invented into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Muslim should no doubt, not even for an instant, should, should, should have no doubt, even for an instant, that what Allah has prescribed is wise. That there is great wisdom in what Allah commanded us to do, and great wisdom in what He forbade for us to do. That is the straight path and the only way that we can be safe and at peace, protecting our honor, our minds, our health, in accordance with the natural disposition, the fitrah with which Allah created mankind. Some people have tried to attack Islam, to attack its rulings, denouncing certain things that we believe in and that we aim to follow. And the societies that have done so, moving away from what Allah ordained, or staying away from what He forbade, then those societies are in a state of misery. When people rejected divorce, murder took place. When they rejected plural marriage, men started taking mistresses. When they were allowed, they made it lawful for them to have alcohol, then you saw all kinds of shameful and immoral actions becoming widespread. We're dealing with an issue now that is wreaking havoc across the globe and especially even in the Muslim Ummah. And it is the topic of like homosexuality. And you may know it now, going away from those, that word to LGBTQ and the likes of these matters. And as much as we want to run away for it, from it, and we don't want to discuss it, it needs to be discussed. And we need to have the warnings, and we need to be advised, so that we can help preserve at least ourselves and our families and those who are around us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this goes against the natural disposition, the fitrah with which Allah created mankind. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مولود إلا يولد على الفطرة ثم يقول اقرأوا فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها لا تبديل لخلق الله ذلك الدين القيم The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said no child is born but they're upon the فطرة Every child is born knowing what is right and wrong upon the pure natural disposition that Allah created mankind with. So then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, recite the nature made by Allah in which he created man. There is no altering Allah's nature. This is the right religion. So the spread we've seen of homosexuality and the likes of it 
has caused many, many diseases that no one can deny. If just AIDS alone, HIV AIDS alone was enough <clears throat> to be looked at, then this was enough of a disease to not want to catch and to stay away from this evil action. But there's over some 20 diseases just tied to homosexuality itself. On top of it, these immoral and abhorrent actions cause the breakup of the family, the family as defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not defined by society. And it led people to become obsessed, preoccupied with these perversions. My brothers and sisters in Islam, these prohibitions have come from Allah, from our Lord, from above His Arsh, above the seven heavens. He decreed this, that the Muslims should not wait until medicine has to prove something or science has to prove something. And even though it does in this case, even if it didn't, we follow what Allah commands and we stay away from what He forbids. We must know and we must believe firmly that Allah only prescribes what's good for the people. Whatever Allah commands is good and it should be followed. So listen to what Allah says. وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقُكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf what means, and remember Lut, Prophet Lot السلام, when he said to his people, do you commit the worst sin, such as none preceding you has ever committed from the alameen, from the mankind and jinn. Verily you practice your lusts on men instead of women, nay, but you are a people transgressing beyond bounds by committing such great sins. Listen to the speech and the words of your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ حَاصِبًا إِلَّا آلَ لُوْتْ نَجَّيْنَاهُمْ بِسَحْرٍ When Allah says what means verily we sent against them a violent storm of stones from the, from the skies, from the heavens to destroy them all except the family of Lut alayhi salam them we saved in the last hour of the night. Listen to the speech of your Lord when he says, وَلُوْتًا آتَيْنَاهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ تَعْمَلُ الْخَبَائِثِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمَ سَوْءٍ فَاسِقِينَ Listen to your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He says what means and remember Lut alayhi salam. We gave him hukm, we gave him right judgment of affairs and prophethood. We gave him religious knowledge and saved him from the town folk who practiced al-khabaith. Allah azza wa jal referred to this titled these actions of homosexuality, al-khaba'ith, to be evil and wicked and filthy. He said, al-khaba'ith. Verily, they were a people given to evil and were fasiqoon. They were rebellious and disobedient to Allah. Listen to the speech of your Lord when he said, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ وَأَنْتُمْ تُبْصِرُونَ When Allah said, what means, and remember Lut alayhi salam, when he said to his people, do you commit al-fahisha? This is every great, this is the evil, the great sin, every kind of unlawful thing, while you see one another doing evil without screen, highlighting the destruction that will come to the people who make this filth and this evil, something that would spread because they do so in public. أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ Do you approach men in your lusts rather than women? Nay, but you are people who behave senselessly, without mind or intellect. فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوْتٍ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ So he said there was no other... So Allah said... There was, عفواً, so Allah said in the Qur'an what means, so there was no other answer given by His people, except they said, drive out the people of Lut, the family of Lut, from your city. Verily, these are men who want to be clean and pure. This was an acknowledgement from them themselves, that the homosexuality they were upon is the opposite of clean and pure. Its opposite is filth and disgustingness. So they said, Luke, let's kick him out because he wants to be clean and pure. 
فأنجيناه وأهل وأهله إلا إلا امرأته قدرناها من الغابرين. So we saved him and his family except his wife. We destined her to be of those who remained behind. وأمطرنا عليهم مطر فساء مطر المنذرين. So we saved him and his family except his wife, and we rained down on them a rain of stones. So evil was the rain of those who were warned. So how can any of us change the position, allow or normalize this, especially without any proof, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke out so clearly and so defiantly against them? عن جابر بن عبد الله قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أخوف ما أخاف على أمتي عمل قوم لوط. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said <clears throat> there is nothing I fear for my ummah more than the deed of the people of Lut. Alayhi salam. Over 1444 years ago when the hijrah happened, we would think the unthinkable, but unfortunately it's hitting our ummah. And this is beginning, beginning to be normalized, seen as acceptable, seen as something which isn't a big deal. So we must reaffirm ourselves the true position that we have based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah. This hadith is in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi ibn Majah in Shaykh al-Albani. He authenticated it. So this homosexuality, whether amongst men and women, is one of the most abhorrent and evil actions that a person may commit. One of the most shameful deeds in the world, and in this world and in the hereafter. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said concerning the one who commits this act, that they committed so great of an evil, that there is no hope they will ever be reformed after that. Because it takes away your good deeds, removes all modesty and shyness. And how is a person going to fare when they have no shyness before Allah nor before His creation? Indeed, Allah may be exalted. He destroyed an entire town <clears throat> along with its people, namely the people of Lut salam, because of this immoral action. So even if you live in a land where Islam is not the law, and knowing that individually we are not to carry out these things, they must come from a, a governing body, or those who oversee those in authority. Our duty should still strive to be what eliminates this evil from us being able to see it, or yeah, I mean, what would prevent someone from doing it. We must advise and we must warn. So nowadays you'll see maybe a movie has something like this in it, you make sure it's a cartoon. You make sure it's not watched. You make sure that it's not looked at. You make sure you know what's being taught in the classrooms. Because we have to protect ourselves from this spreading even further. And Abi Sa'id bin Al-Khudri radiallahu anhu qal, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, Man ra'a munkaran fal yugayirhu biyadih, Fa'in lam yassati'a fa bi lisanih, Fa'in lam yassati'a fa bi qalbih, Wa thalika ad'afu al-eeman. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, or he was heard to have said, whoever amongst you sees an evil, let him change it, change it with his hands. If he's unable to do so, let him change it with his tongue, meaning speak up against it. And if he cannot do so, then he should at least hate it in his heart, and this is the weakest of faith. A few years ago, there was a proposition that came to yeah, he ban it. We knew with time it's going to happen, because that's the way the world is going. But there was a proposition in California to not allow or not recognize these homosexual marriages, whatever it be, whether it be, uh, you know, man to man, woman to woman, whatever it was. And many of the Muslims didn't go and vote. Even if you're against the voting, in these cases where you can stop an evil from spreading in society, even for a day, for an hour, you should do so. عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعن المخنثين من الرجال والمترجلات من النساء وقال أخرجوهم من بيوتكم وأخرجوا فلانا وفلانا يعني المخنثين. This hadith which is صحيح in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, Abu Dawood, and Sheikh Laban, he authenticated ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما. He said. That the Messenger of Allah وسلم, cursed the effeminate men, المخنث, the man who imitates the woman. And now you can't go to any store or any place 
But you will find a man who has, who's wearing jewelry, earrings, piercings, who has nail polish on his nails. Things that are, we know are clearly attached to yani, the female actions. And he cursed the women who imitate the men in their look, in their dress, in their style, in their haircut, the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they speak. He cursed both of them. He said, put them out, expel them of your houses and put so-and-so out. That is to say the effeminate men. This crime of homosexuality is one of the greatest crimes, the worst of sins, the most abhorrent of deeds. And again, Allah punished a people for doing them greater than He punished any other nation that came before them. So this shows the violation of the fitrah, the true evil that it is, the amount of misguidance, the weakness of intellect, the lack of religious commitment, the sign of doom and deprivation from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek Allah's refuge with this. In the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, he narrated that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَعْنَ اللَّهِ مَنْ عَمَلَ عَمْلُ قَوْمِ Three times the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, <clears throat> may Allah curse the one who does the action of the people of Lut. How can we as Muslims, who follow the Qur'an and follow the Sunnah, how can we as Muslims ever go away from this belief, this foundation, with no other proof? The Prophet ﷺ made dua that they be cursed. So it is not upon us to normalize, or to make it okay, or to make it something allowable in our minds, in our bodies, in our hearts, in our actions. When this came along the ways of our deen, even more so, looking at the Sahaba, the best of those to follow the Sunnah, May Allah be pleased with them. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Khalid ibn Walid, Abdullah ibn al-Zubair, Abdullah ibn Abbas. Imam Ahmad in one of his uh, two reports, a Shafi'i, according to one of his opinions, they had the view that the punishment for this homosexuality should be worse than the punishment for zina. That should be more severe than the punishment for zina. And those who had this view were the majority of the ummah. And more than one scholar narrated it that there was a consensus amongst the Sahaba that there is no sin, sin which brings about <coughs> worse consequences than this homosexuality. And they're second only to the evil consequences of kufr. And they may be worse than the consequences even of murder. In our heads, if we're asked, we'll say, no, murder is worse. Ikhwani wa fati fillah. Take your mind out of every equation unless you have to use it for some reason. When Allah or His Messenger or the Sahaba spoke, that's what we follow. If you want to be a part of the successful part of this Ummah. Not for you to go and then let your mind twist things. They said Allah did not test anyone with the major sin before the people of Lut. And He punished them with a the punishment He did not send upon any other nation. Combining all types of punishments. He destroyed them. He turned their houses upside down. He caused them to be swallowed up by the earth. He sent stones down from the sky to pelt them. He took away their sight. He punished them and made their punishment ongoing and wreaked havens, ha vengeance upon them, such like was not wrought upon any other nation. This was because of the greatness of the evil consequence of this crime, which the earth can bar hardly bear, that was committed upon it. And the angels, the malaik, would flee to the farthest corner they could go to, just to not witness this, lest the punishment be, punishment be sent upon those who do it, and they be stricken along with them. <coughs> this is how much the angels even wanted to stay away from witnessing these lewd and evil and filthy acts. <clears throat> and they said, whoever ponders of the words of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at these ayat, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلَ Look how Allah refers to zina, which we know is from the major sins. He said, and come not near zina, unlawful intimacy with someone who is not your spouse. Verily, it is a fahisha. It is a way of transgressing the limits of great sin and an evil way. When he refers to homosexuality, what does he say? وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقُكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ And when he talks about homosexuality, what does he say? 
He says, and remember Lut when he said to his people, do you commit the worst sin? He made Al-Fahisha with the Al in front of it, making definitive, clarifying that this is an evil, grave sin, such as none preceding you committed in the Alameen, because this was from the first tests of the major sins. So we see the difference when he made it definitive, saying that it is the worst of sins. This suggests that it contains all essences of evil and sin. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we cannot as a Muslim honestly and truly agree with this saying or claim that someone is born this way or that it is natural or that it's their natural disposition. This is nothing but a distortion of nature. Nothing but a distortion of what Allah created us upon. And Allah counted their deed as wrongdoing and immoral and again sent upon them a punishment like no other nation has seen. They claim that their orientation is natural to propagate and spread immorality. And this is an excuse they use. Many of them change their appearance to look a certain way. If they're changing their appearance, then how were they created this way as they claim? My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah does not create anyone to punish them. He doesn't create people to torture them. He created mankind to worship Him. Allah is saying what means I did not create jinn or mankind except to worship me. But he may test his slaves with a hardship to test their faith, to test their iman, to erase their sins, to raise their status. Allah is too just <clears throat> to force a person to commit a sin than to punish him. On the contrary, people commit sins because of their free choice. And this is truly it. Allah said, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Allah says what means and your Lord treats no one with injustice. So Allah does not create someone just to punish them. Any evil that spread is us following our own sins, our own desires, following the path of shaitan. May Allah protect us from it. <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says إن الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون. Allah says what means verily Allah He only enjoined upon us. He enjoins upon us al-adl, justice, worshipping none but him, tawheed, and al-ihsan, to be patient in performing our duties to Allah in accordance with the sunnah, giving help to your family, the kith and the kin. And he forbids al-fahsha, all evil deeds, and from them without a doubt was categorically chosen without any difference of opinion that this fahsha in it is this homosexuality. He has forbidden it, and al-munkar, anything prohibited by Islamic law, from shirk to disbelief to every kind of evil deed, and al-baghi, all kinds of oppression, Allah admonishes you that you may take heed. قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا يَأْمَرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says what means, shaitan commands you only to what is evil, only to what is fahisha, uh, to fahsha, to what is sinful, that you should say against Allah something that you do not know. And Allah said, Allah says what means shaitan, he threatens you with poverty. He orders you to commit fahsha, evil deeds and sins. From them again, homosexuality without a doubt. Whereas Allah promises you forgiveness from Himself and a bounty, and Allah is all sufficient for His creatures' needs, all knowers, all knower. Allah says, "Qul inna Allah la yamru bil fahsha, atakulun ala Allah ma la taalamun." Allah says, "What means nay? Allah never commands fahsha. He never commands evil deeds, things which are unlawful, things which He called filthy and evil. Do you say of Allah what you know not?" 
My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there is no hiding the fitrah. Clearly we were all born upon it. Do not make your desires your Lord. Even when some say, well, my urges and my feelings are this, how can they be wrong? Well, this is the true test from Allah. Some have the desire, the desire to commit zina, to get drunk, to go and murder or kill somebody. Because they feel it and desire it, does that make that action lawful? You wouldn't, th- you wouldn't think so. So how can you think the same with homosexuality? Nowadays, they want to do these evil and sinful acts. They want it recognized and accepted, but they don't accept that someone can have a different view. Especially when we know our view is from the fitrah and from the natural ways that Allah created us upon. No one has the right to tell us what to believe. We are not harsh. We are not irrational. We are not unkind for not accepting the evils, those evils as okay and permissible. Nor should the rights they aim to get be compared to the rights we have. Because we're becoming lax in our ways. Well, if we don't support them, they won't support us. If we don't defend their rights, then we won't have our rights. To this I say, Allah. Fear Allah with respect to this. If you follow Allah, He will give you a way out of every situation as He has said. From our belief is that we should hate. And yes, we should hate. The word is hate. This is not something which is uh, yeah, you know, a, a far-fetched thought. We should hate any disobedience to our Creator. Even if we're the one doing the disobedience, we should hate that disobedience. To disobey Allah, to disobey His Messenger Wasallam. We should hate it even if we were to do it ourselves. And we should hate all types of immoral, obscene actions. And the most heinous and evil ones, we should hate even more. Yes, we're a people who are demanded to have the best character, to have the best manners, to be generous, to be kind. And we can always maintain that in hopes that our character may lead someone to Islam and away from the evil or the sin thereupon. But we don't do this by giving up or changing Allah's deen. We don't do this by giving up or changing the sunnah of His Messenger wasallam. Our Prophet wasallam, he said, you will see diseases come after diseases, disease after disease that you've never seen before when al fahisha spreads in the public. And what do we see? But every time we look, another, we turn another page, we see another disease, a brand new disease coming and attacking the people for the spread of immorality from zina, homosexuality and the likes of them. Remember the hadith we mentioned in the beginning, where the Prophet he said, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا يُولِدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ That there is no one that is born except that they're born upon what is correct, upon what is right, upon what is pure, the fitra, the natural disposition, <clears throat> the nature made by Allah in which He created man, and there is no altering Allah's nature or creation, that is the right religion. ثُمَّ يَقُولْ أَقْرَأُوا فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمِ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, every scripture of people, even with their changes and their alterations and their distortions, they all condemn the evil of homosexuality. We have our beliefs, we have and we are entitled to them. But sadly as Muslims we have been the most quiet about this issue. Afraid of what people may then say about the rights we have. And to this again, we say fear Allah. What or who are you afraid of? Do we change our deen to appease the people while it would anger our Lord? Or do we appease our Lord even if it angers the people? And the correct one is the last of them, the latter of them. To the point where some of our children now are thinking it's acceptable, or it's mean if you say that you don't accept these evil acts of homosexuality. <clears throat> there is no way on the face of this earth, no way on the face of this earth, that it is something that is acceptable or allowed or natural or that you're born with. Do you think Allah would destroy a people for an action and then make that action permissible? It was given to us as an example. So people would realize sin and realize the punishment that came upon those sinners, to realize the graveness and the seriousness of that sin. So know, without a fact, without a doubt, that it is not natural, it is not normal, it is not allowed, it is not acceptable, and we should not allow our hearts to be corrupted by shaitan to accept these evils. Allah said, أَفَرَأَيْتَ 
من اتخذ إلهه هواه وأضله الله على علم وختم على سمعه وقلبه وجعل على بصره غشاوة فمن يهديه من بعد الله فلا تذكرون Allah says what means have you seen him who takes his own lust his vain desires as his God and Allah knowing him as such he left him astray sealed his hearing sealed his heart put a cover on his sight who then will guide him after Allah will you not then remember this is all the strain of the people away from what is natural and pure so yes Allah referred to homosexuality, LGBTQ, whatever you want to call it, as al-fahisha, the worst of sin. This is haram and evil. Yes, we don't want it to be made the norm. Yes, we should not want it taught to our kids in school. Yes, you should not want it being a part or being allowed in the Boy Scouts or whatever other thing that, that may be, it may be out there in. We should have a problem with any sinful act being taught or influenced on us or our children or anybody or any group. Even if they're not from the Muslims, why? Because it will spread and ruin society and eventually lead you, reach you. I will end by saying, despite our stance towards this, without a doubt, that the Prophet said, "Man qatala mu'ahad falam jannah." That the mu'ahad, the mu'ahad is the person that is not Muslim that is living amongst Muslims in peace and security. This person, you are not allowed to harm. If you're living in a land of peace and security, you cannot harm that person who is not Muslim. Even if they're doing evil acts. If it's the law of the land, then the, the governing or people, the, the ones in authority, will have their rules and carry out whatever punishment they carry out. Knowing this, when you see these people doing this fahisha, doing this, these evil acts, these immoral acts, that we will in no way accept as Muslims, and we don't want it to be taught, or we don't want it to be the norm, etc. It does not give us the right to take matters into our own hands. It does not give you the right to go and harm them or kill them. We are a people who were instructed to have the best of character, the best of manners, to be kind, to be generous, to be nice, to be polite. But just know and remember that you can be this way without accept, accepting the views of somebody else or advocating for their views. You can still be a good person with good manners without accepting what that person who's talking to you or dealing with is upon. Without knowing, without agreeing with what they're upon. So just keep this in mind. This is not for you to go and take matters into your hands. It's for you to know the seriousness of this sin. How it's spreading through, throughout the society, throughout the land, throughout the world. How it's entering into the Muslim ummah, into the homes of the Muslim families. And it's something we have to be warned about and advised about. We ask Allah to, perfect, to protect us from falling into this fa'asha and all types of fa'asha. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat, wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'min. Al-Nas, al-Ahyai minhum al-Amwat, inna ka anta sami'un qareebun mujib al-Da'wat. Ya muqallad al-Qulub, thabit qulubin ala deenik. Ya muqallad al-Qulub, thabit qulubin ala deenik. يا مقلب القلوب ثابت قلوب على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون سلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين